So we have the, the wording come up here in, um, in Revelation. So I want to give some evidence on the church going up to glory um, here described in Revelation before tribulation. And in Revelation 4.1 we read, After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this so we see right after chapters 1 to 3 where in the book of revelation the word church is mentioned 19 different times the very next phrase in chapter 4 begins with that co that command come up here um, the here is defined by the words a door standing open in heaven from here on out the church is not mentioned again until the end of the seven-year tribulation. So we go from 19 times in the first three chapters of the word church, us, believers, body of Christ, spoken of very explicitly and by name, not by, um, you know, that one could imply such a thing. It's very clear to uh, crickets during the tribulation. So from here on out, the church is not mentioned again until the end. Uh, with Christ at the second coming. So now the focus is on to the Jewish people and God's wrath being poured out on the Gentile nations. Again, you'll remember from the book of Daniel, a time of Jacob's sorrow, and it's the 70th week. So that's a full week of years. This is another evidence that there's no pre-wrath or you know mid-tribulation rapture. It's got to be pre because it's a week of years. That's seven years. So if we, the church, were to be taken at any point eating into seven years, then we're a part of that 70th week of that final seven years. And that's the time of Jacob's sorrow, <clears throat> like I mentioned, and the, the Gentile nations who are unbelieving. Now, even though this command is being given to John, um, who, by the way, is a part of the church, many would believe that this is a prophetic reference to the rapture of the church. So first of all, the phrase come up here, that just happens to be the exact same phrase used in Revelation 11 of the two witnesses who were killed in the middle of the seven-year tribulation. The same word where they're bodily resurrected and they ascend into heaven as well. You see that in Revelation 11, 12. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. There it is. And they went up to heaven in the cloud while their enemies looked on. So the second clue in Revelation 4.1 is referring to the rapture of the church is found in the phrase, that door standing open in heaven. So, and it, it also just so happens we don't see another door opening in heaven until the end of the seven-year tribulation when the armies of heaven, including the church, are let out at the second coming of Jesus. We see this in Revelation 19. 11 and 14. I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Now this fine linen, white and clean. This is also a clear reference to the church as Revelation 19 also reveals Revelation 19, 7 and 8, His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. And the fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. So this is a clear reference uh, to us at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Coming back with Jesus, right? We're seeing the back of his head. He's leading us. We're not the inhabitants of the earth who see him coming. We don't want to see his face. We want to see the back of his head or coming with him. So basically, heaven is opening up the door to receive the church. And then heaven is opening up that door to have us return with Christ. So according to the scripture, it would appear that the church goes to heaven at Revelation 4, before the seven-year tribulation, comes again in Revelation 19, at the end of the seven-year tribulation. And this would make sense. This is also why the church is mentioned all throughout chapters 1 through 3, but then disappears until the second coming of Jesus at the end of the seven-year tribulation. So 
So it also makes you think like if we were to be around during the tribulation, you would think we would hear a different command from the Lord as opposed to just come up here. Um, you know, be maybe more like stay down there or good luck in the midst of all that or, you know, see you in seven years. Have fun trying to survive now. I mean, you know what I mean? It, it would be some more specific language from the Lord rather than just, you know, if we were in the midst of it. Uh, the Lord prepares us with everything in Scripture, and it just seems a little out of place. I don't think it's by chance. It fits perfectly with the pre-tribulation rapture scenario. And also, furthermore, it needs to be noted that the church will be busy during the seven-year tribulation in heaven. And with what we're doing up in glory for seven years has nothing to do with the wrath. As uh, one researcher states, while the seven-year tribulation is occurring, the Bible records the church will be busy with three events. None of the three have to do with suffering on a world being destroyed. What are they? So the first event the rapture church will participate in is a judgment by God, the judgment of the just. This judgment on works is not to determine eternal destiny, but reward, right? This is a judgment, but this is, <clears throat> this is that Bema seat judgment. This is like an award ceremony. We find this in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, and Revelation 19. Six to nine. So the judgment of the just. That's the first thing we're doing um, up in, in glory during the seven year tribulation period. Second event, the marriage supper of the Lamb. This feast celebrates the spiritual marriage of Jesus' bride, us, the church, to him. You can find that in Revelation 19, 7 to 9. And that's going to be amazing. The third event that follows the marriage supper of the Lamb. And, um, sorry, so the third event follows the marriage supper of the Lamb and is the church's preparation to follow Jesus into the battle of Armageddon, which is a slaughter. It's not even a battle, right? At the conclusion of the tribulation, right? This us coming with him. So this event's the second coming of Jesus. This is in a lot of places in scripture. Zechariah 14, 1 to 21. Matthew 24, 29 to 31, Mark 13, uh, Luke 21, Revelation 19. So the, the Armageddon uh, slaughter rather than battle. Uh, Revelation 19, 14 identifies the church in their fine linen, white and clean, which was given to us during the first event, the judgment of the just. Uh, we, the church, and angelic forces follow Jesus into the second coming into earth, but only Jesus engages in battle with uh, mere words that defeats the nations in siege against Jerusalem. So we see that again with this language, come up here, um, the door that's opened in heaven. This is happening before tribulation begins. There's things we need to be doing during that seven years up in glory. There's no divine U-turn where we get caught away and come right back down. No, no, no. This this is <laughs> the seven years of wrath redirecting the attention back to Israel for crucifying King Jesus, for denying the Messiah, for saying his blood be on us and our children. That there's going to be that day of reckoning. Book of Zechariah that a third of Israel shall be saved through the furnace of tribulation. How gracious of the Lord. He's still going to he, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities for salvation during the tribulation, but for Israel, you know, the Lord is so forgiving and merciful. Guys, wow, right? Can you sense that? His mercy and his kindness and his love uh, during the worst time in human history. He's still saving a remnant of his people. He gives the whole unbelieving world the two witnesses to help. The angel with the eternal gospel giving that gospel. The 144,000. <laughs> You know, and just the wrath and the pain, even that by its usage can drive a person to their knees to repent. Now we know through Revelation many times it talks about like they repented not. There are so many that are wicked. 
and it says by their pharmacia witchcraft they are deceived who knows how many pharmaceuticals and things and drugs people will be taking and have been taking that will be compounded potentially in the uh, tribulation period that makes it just I don't know deadens them they understand there's God but they hate him they understand what they're doing is wicked but they're just not going to repent they love it but my point is um how merciful it is that the Lord is still uh, providing <clears throat> the opportunity uh, for salvation. So the rapture before the wrath come up here. This is uh, just a few scriptures I wanted to share with you guys on uh, just to encourage you to continue to let you know that we're, we're not we have no business with any of this wrath. It's all wrath. That scroll when it's broken, uh, that first seal is the beginning of wrath. The revealing of the Antichrist, and we must be taken away, the believers, before he is revealed. Praise God. So get ready. We have things we need to do up in glory. Uh, we'll just follow the Lord's lead on that once we get there. But it's going to be a glorious thing. Keep that in your mind each and every day as you continue in sanctification on your journey. Understand that we can see the finish line. It's a glorious finish line. And be bold for Jesus today. Share with others a little bit about Jesus, if, if nothing else, at least his name, Jesus bless you, or whatever the Spirit might draw you to say. So thank you guys for watching my video. Appreciate it. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share this video. I will see you next time. God bless you.